Hi right, guys, there's another one here that I haven't shown you yet. Um, I got this. This is a 1925 uh, credenza, Victor credenza that I restored. Um, and I, I had done this probably about four months ago. I finished it. It took me a long time, um, but I refinished it here in, in uh, Walnut. Um, really, really beautiful sounding machine. I got this from a guy. I paid $200 for it. Um, it's been in the family since new. Uh, came with about 300 records, and I think there were like 30 or 35 record uh, Victrola record binders full of records. Came with it to a record cabinet, um, all kinds of stuff. This thing came with tungsten needles, the whole thing. I got this. Uh, the woodwork on this thing was in bad shape, um, but I refinished it, and it came out good. I think it did anyway. I did a pretty good job. Um, it's tedious, I'll tell you, cleaning all that old stuff out of all these medallions on the front. Um, the inside is all original. Uh, I didn't touch that. Um, so I tried to get the color as close as I could to the original, which I think I did. Um, it's funny, too, with this one here, you look at the date on this one. It was made on December 31st, 1925. And the early uh, early credenzas of that year, they were uh, two-door models. This is actually a four-door. And they come out with them toward the later part of uh, 25, I think, into 26. So this was like one of the first ones they made. Um, of that time with the four door, um, and also it came with a brass reproducer, and they only made that in 1925. So I lucked out with that. Um, another six months or so, I probably would have ended up with a, uh, a pop metal one. Uh, so I lucked out, and I got an extra uh, pop metal reproducer right there, a brass one that I, I mean a uh, pop metal one I restored. Doesn't go to this machine obviously, but they as as a spare. Uh, had the original manual here with it. And uh, there's an original ad, advertisement for the machine. Um, it's, a, it's a record catalog there, record list cabinet. And that's actually the cabinet. Long, long uh, is the name of the name brand of the cabinet. Hanover, Pennsylvania record cabinet. I haven't, I haven't done anything with that yet. And that right there is just another orthophonic style uh, record list. It's a uh, index records. You put your records in there. It's never been written in yet, so it's like it's all brand new. I never used it. But I keep it in there. And then the serial number on this one here, I don't know if you can see it, it's uh, 20388. It's a credenza. So, really good machine. Anybody who collects this stuff, this is like the best of the best. If you have, if you don't have a credenza in your collection and you collect this stuff, you need to get one. Um, they're not really super rare, but they're, they're not cheap either, especially for something like uh, for um, the brass reproducer. But, I'll show you the inside. The only thing I had to change in the inside here was the grill cloth, um, and that stuff is expensive. It was like, I think it was like $90 a yard for that stuff. It's outrageous. But I mean, if you want the original grill cloth, then you got to pay it, I guess, so. But I, uh, bought, I bought that, so I had to redo the grill cloth, because somebody had cut it with a knife at one time. But then you got your record storage on there. Just record binders in there, that side. Then there's another one over here on this side. For $200, I mean, I couldn't go wrong. The story behind this one here is um, the guy got it from, his grandfather bought this in 1925. He bought it for his wife for Christmas. Um, and they got it home, and they played it and everything. And then throughout the years, um, they bought, because uh, if you live local, I live in New Hampshire, so uh, Lake Winnipesaukee is um, in New Hampshire here. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of that. It's a nice lake. Um, they bought a camp in 1957. And uh, they brought this up to the camp, and they kept it there, and they used to play it and stuff in the 50s, early part of the 50s, and uh, mid, late 50s era. So when they went back one year to open up their camp, I think in 58 or 59, uh, the place was ransacked. A uh, broken window, somebody broke in, and uh, they destroyed a lot of stuff. And um, they found the doors open just like this on the credenza. And a big cut mark right down the middle of the uh, grill cloth. And I don't know, he doesn't know to this day who did it or why they did it. Probably just to be spiteful. Um, or maybe they thought somebody was uh, hiding money or something in there. Who knows why people did it. But um, that was the story behind that. And the funny thing is, is, they used to drag this thing and bring it out to the front porch of the camp. And they used to play this thing. It's so loud. And they would hear it from the other side of the lake. Um, and the people would be dancing out there, out front of the house. And so it's... Pretty nice to have a little story behind it, a little history, but it's been the same family since new. So, let me play this for you here. The song I'm going to play on here is um, 
Living in Sunlight and Loving in Moonlight by Bernie Cummings, uh, New York Hotel Orchestra. Pretty good song here. And that's a nice brass reproducer. I haven't done anything to it. Um, sounds unbelievable, like they all do. Hope you enjoy it. 1925 Credenza. Really loud, too. Credenza works beautiful, sounds great. That's only a medium tone needle, believe it or not. This thing is unbelievably loud, and um, I couldn't talk on the video, but I wanted to show you. I fixed the uh, the dash pots too in that lid. Uh, if you notice, they uh, they shut by themselves, and you could adjust them. See, and you just let it go by itself, and it shuts by itself. And that was a pretty neat little feature that they had on them. I got them set a little too strong. I mean, it takes a little. Takes a little while to shut, but it sets nice and easy, like it should, nice and quiet. And um, I don't know. They say they they always told you that actually there's a thing on the inside of the cabinet that tells you to you know make sure you keep the lid closed while playing, because it's trying to protrude the sound out through the huge horn here. But I think it sounds better with it open. But I mean, you know, to each their own. But, but anyway, that's that never worked too. When I got that, that they didn't even work. I had to take them all apart, clean them, put new leather in there. Um, put it all back together again. So this this was by far uh, I've been doing this now for almost 20 years collecting this stuff And I've restored a lot of machines, but this one by far was one of the biggest jobs I had to do um, And I had to send the motor out too and it had new grease and it's a four spring motor in this too So that cost me quite a bit, but it's like brand new now. So I'll never have to touch it again for a long time My, my, my daughter will be, be getting all this good stuff <laughs> Hopefully she takes care of it 1925 Victor Credenza and I hope you enjoyed it. I got a lot more nice things to show you. I haven't uh, made a videos in uh, quite a while so I have a lot of other machines. I even got a nice Edison